a lot of fancy technology out there today in planters, so you can change populations as you go across the field, in some cases even change varieties. But the big question is, how do you set up these maps so your planter can do this automatically? Well, you definitely need to look at more than just one piece of information. For example, let's say you took grid soil samples this fall and you say, well, hey, here's kind of some good ground and some poor ground. This should be how I do things. You know what? That might not be a bad way to start, but I'd also cross-reference that with your yield maps and lay the yield maps over the top and see, wow, here's the zones where I'm getting the highest yield and here's the zones where I'm struggling. All right, we have a lot of people that'll say, you know what, I'm gonna use soil type maps. That's how I'm going to make my variable population map. And you can certainly do that. But what we've kind of found over the years is, number one, the soil type maps aren't super accurate. And number two, you can change a soil type over time using good fertility practices, using other good agronomic practices. So I think I'd lean more toward what Darren said, looking at your soil tests, looking at your yield maps, rather than just looking at a soil type map. But that's not to say that you couldn't still use the soil type map. For example, we've got some issues with sandy strips running right up the middle of really good heavy ground. Okay, well that's pretty obvious. And that actually does show up on the soil test, shows up on the yield map, but it also definitely shows up on that soil type map. So you wanna kind of do a little comparison of all these things and put it together. But the big thing too is you wanna figure out a way to do this fairly quickly. And that's why it just takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of work on that computer. You gotta get these things done fast. On our own farm, we're looking at maybe three to five minutes for each field to set what our population is going to be. And then, Darren, I would say it's more a, a little bit of your kind of feel for it and your judgment call, because is this going to be a wet year? Is it going to be a dry year? We don't know. Hey, the other thing, Brian, that we didn't talk about is satellite imagery, and that's one that's really growing in popularity, seeing where those areas of the field that are struggling with growth during the middle of the season are is really important. And it often tells you, hey, here's an area I really do need to cut back on my on my population because I'm struggling getting enough moisture into the plants if I get too high a population in those areas. And, and yes, uh, this does get to be a, a judgment call in terms of, hey, is 34,000 seeds per acre too much for corn in my area? Or is 30,000 a better one for me? And you know, if I'm shooting for 300 bushel corn, how much do I really need to have for a population? Do I need 40,000? I don't believe that you do. Well, one of the other big questions we get is, how much do you really vary it in the field? What do you guys do? So in our own operation, we might vary from 36, 38,000 on the high side, all the way down to 22,000 on the low side in some of the really sandy, non-irrigated ground. So we might make great big swings, but a lot of this stuff we've kind of figured out over time just using our own trials on our farm. And that's one of the other great things you can do when you set up each different map on your farm. You could have a few different strips going out there in a couple of fields to do some testing. Maybe you wanna test 30,000 versus 34,000 versus 38,000. Maybe in soybeans, you wanna test 135,000 versus 155,000 versus 175,000. Run some trials yourself on your farm because again, everybody's ground's a little bit different. Everybody kinda has to use their own best judgment and Certainly you can rely on an agronomist if you want to, but wouldn't it be nicer to have your own data from your own farm? And I think the way you set these strips up too is you look at your field and you say, hey, here's a pass that I'm gonna make through the field where I'm gonna go across two or three different soil types. That's the strip that you wanna do this on. Now you can see, hey, I went up from 30,000 to 34,000. What kind of difference was there in yield when I did that? Or I dropped down to 26,000. And, and now I've got this three-way comparison running right through this strip with multiple soil types, and I can see how that yield varied as I went along. Now, the Iowa Soybean Association has the Iowa On-Farm Network. You can take a look there just for how they've set up trials and what kind of results they've seen doing some uh, variable population studies throughout the state of Iowa, too. Well, once again, we would just encourage you, if you've got this type of technology on your planter, at least be experimenting with it. Try to figure out yourself, is this going to pay for me or not? And like we said a little bit earlier, we would strongly encourage you to take a look at the yield monitor, take a look at uh, any satellite imagery you have and your soil test results, rather than looking at an old soil type map that's usually not all that accurate. One other thing you wanna watch for as you go across your farm is our Read of the Week. 
We'll talk about how to stop this tough weed coming up later in the show.